Chris here from Friendly Frenzy Games, and today we're going to explain and solve all of the puzzles in the first of the Wild West DLC rooms and escape simulator. This one's called The Jail. First and foremost, thanks so much for stopping by. Be sure to subscribe to Friendly Frenzy Games for many more escape simulator guides if you like what you see today. Um, you can see, obviously, in this escape room, it's the first one in this series of DLC. We're starting off in an, um, an empty jail cell here. And we've got some markings on the wall. These are what's going to help us solve our first combination. So we can get right into it. If we see our padlock on the front here, it says days gone. What we're going to want to do is count up these tallies on the wall here. So we have a block of nine fives. We have another six fives. So ultimately 15 fives. We have another four groups of five here. So 19 fives. And then we have another four here. You gotta take this hat off and it'll uncover another tally here. So ultimately what we're gonna do is end up with, we're gonna have 24 um, of these five groups of tallies. And then we need to add the last three here and the last four. So what that's gonna give us is 127. So we have 127 days gone on this combination here. So that pops the padlock off, but we still can't actually escape this door as all it does is open um, the lock here. What we need to do now is you can pop into the harmonica here and you can see there's a small um, note sticking out of it. Throw that back down and we can give this a quick read. And it says, one sturdy shiv and a delicate bobby pin. Wiggle them around a bit and you're out. So where we get these is if you pop off the third knob on the coat hanger, you can see in behind there's our shiv. And then our bobby pin is actually just inside the flask on the shelf here. So give it a quick inspect. Hit the top to pop the lid off and then you'll see our bobby pins just down inside. So make sure you collect that and we can throw that back on the bed. And then just before we leave the room, we want to make sure that we grab this hat too. So grab your bobby pin and grab the shiv and it'll automatically work itself out. And now we've escaped our main cell here. You can see we have another cell right beside us. We can't actually get into it without grabbing the cell key on this desk here. So we'll go ahead and pick that up just to get into this next set of puzzles here. You can see there's a couple of things that we have available to us. There's some more markings on the wall here. So three snakes slithered in the sun, we have one vulture sat on the dead tree, and seven coyotes stalked their prey. And what that relates to is just if you click this cot here, it's going to raise and there's going to be a lockbox underneath. So you can see here it's got a marking of a vulture on it, it's a snake and our coyote. So obviously we have to plug our numbers from the wall in here into this lockbox. So it doesn't matter the order, but you do want to make sure that you get the numbers correct. And you can see out um, the symbol here, you have to make sure that you put the number in in like a proper order here. So you wouldn't be able to, for example, our vulture is one. It has to be this first one here, just in order of kind of like a maze where you're supposed to escape. Um, it can't just be like one randomly marked one here. So we'll have our one vulture just up at the top. We said we have seven coyotes and three and three snakes. So pull our lockbox back up. We said we have three snakes. Obviously, it looks like we're supposed to be going through the bottom here, so to give us a direction. So go out the bottom and count three. One, two, three. So it's going to be this one here. And then our coyotes was seven. And then you see we're going out kind of the top left here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So we give that a click and it pops and it gives us what this actually is already is our final room key but obviously we have no way to crack this open yet so we just kind of carry it with us um, through the majority of this room before we leave this cell what we want to do is collect just open the little hinge here and we can collect the note for our next puzzle there's a few other things that we got to come back for in this cell but once we get to that puzzle or those puzzles anyways we can come back and collect those but just to kind of get some sort of direction on a next puzzle we can get into these instructions here but we first need to end or open this gun cabinet that's in front of us so you can see down on this legend here this is the hat that we picked up from our first cell and you can see um, obviously our black hat here and it has two bullet holes in it 
the brown hat that's on that legend also is just behind us on top of the poncho here so if we pick this up and give it a quick inspect our black hat had two bullets and our brown hat obviously very clearly here has three if you open the gun cabinet here you can see that the black hat is the larger bullet so we're gonna shoot this um, or load this um, larger gun or the gun with the larger bullet anyways with the number of bullet holes in the in the black hat so we'll load this one twice and then our brown hat again because we have three and it's the smaller bullet we're gonna load this one three times you have to do it in quick succession obviously or the puzzle resets but now that that's done, we can just get rid of these. This is another one of those rooms where the clues really do add up pretty quickly and get uh, your your inventory fills up very fast. It's pretty clunky for hotbar usage. But anyways, what we want to do with this is you can see here that our gold bullet, so the first one that we'll kind of interact with with this puzzle, the gold bullet shoots from the beach to the mountain. You can see on here we have a couple of different symbols on the outside of the note here. There's a beach kind of represented by a palm tree here, and then obviously our mountain on the left side. What we want to do with this, <coughs> sorry, what we want to do with this, as you can see here, here's our black gun, here's our silver gun, and our gold gun. We want to first unlock um, our gold gun to be able to rotate it. And how you do that is just put these levers here in the position that's indicated above the proper gun here. So. To be able to spin the gold gun, we want to have our first lever in the down position, our second lever in the up position, our third lever in the up position, fourth lever in the down position, and up lever, or the fifth lever in the up position. And you can see it pops out a little bit that gives us the opportunity to spin it. And now we have to make sure that we follow this correctly. So obviously the gold bullet shoots from the beach to the mountain. With that, we know that our barrel of the gun has to point towards the mountain because we're shooting to the mountain. Right now, if you were to kind of put our um, legend up here, it's pointed towards the you know theoretical palm tree. So we basically have to spin it from east position to west position. So we can do that here just by clicking this badge. And you can see that it spins. Each time you press it, it moves one kind of knot on the compass here. So we have this in line now to shoot towards the mountain. We can now set up our silver gun. So the silver bullet shoots from day to the night. And you can see, or sorry, from the night to the day. So you can see down here there's a moon representing night and obviously our day is up in the top left corner. So our northwest corner. We can now use the levers to move our silver gun. So we need first lever in the top position, second lever in the top position, third lever in the down position, and four and five levers in the up position. So you can see this pops out now, and again, we have to spin to the barrel to the northeast, or sorry, the northwest, to get the barrel to shoot from night to the day. So we can just hit this a couple of times here. And you can see that the silver gun is rotating. And now we have it in our northeast position because that's where our day symbol is. So the last one here is our black bullet and we're shooting from youngest to oldest. So youngest obviously up here at the very top, but we're shooting to the oldest, which is a south position. So we need to now unlock our black gun here. So first lever is up, second lever is down, third lever is up, and the last two, so lever four and five are down. The black gun pops out a little bit so we can rotate it and again we just want to pop this down to the south position and we unlock our first badge. So basically what you're going to do is just plug these into the board here and that's going to be used for a puzzle to ultimately escape the room. Now that we have the gun cabinet unlocked and that puzzle solved we can proceed to this kind of horse chest here. The instructions for this chest is actually just in the top drawer of this dresser here. So we can go ahead and give this a quick read. Maybe we'll actually pin it here and just zoom in on this lock combination. So the first instruction is we're basically just recreating each one of these scenes and you have to follow it directionally to give it the to actually open the, the lock properly. So on Monday we picked up the trail of the escaped gang at the stables. So we know our starting point is the stables so the horseshoe here which is um, identified by number seven. 
Then we followed the trail on Tuesday, four miles east. So we know we're going to the right four miles, so we'll go from seven to 11. On Wednesday, the note led us back west for nine miles, so we'll go to the left nine miles, which takes us down to two. And then on Thursday, they picked up the trail again, and after going back east for three miles, we finally caught them. So we're gonna go um, to the right or east for another three miles, which we end at five, and we can pop this chest open now. So we grab another deputy's badge, and we can plug it into this board here. I'm gonna just leave. We are gonna ultimately need this liquor bottle for a puzzle. I'm just gonna leave that there for now. I'll remember to come back to it, but just to kind of solve all the puzzles in some sort of order and not get too bent up on um, clues here. So the next puzzle that we can solve would be our safe desk here. And just really quickly, if you pick up the note that's on the desk, it says congratulations on the purchase of your safe desk. Flip it over and this tells you basically that the main drawer, so this middle drawer here, and you can see it's kind of locked up by um, the series of kind of levers here. Um, but what it's saying is mark the drawers in some sort of way to remember them. And basically, I'm just gonna get rid of that. Basically, as you can see here, we have some numbers here, 500, 1000, 2000, and then we have symbols here on our right side. And these coincide with the wanted posters directly ahead of us. So what we wanna do, first of all, is we can unlock, I mean, it doesn't matter which um, drawer you unlock when, but each one is gonna unlock a bolt here. Obviously we have three separate locks that we need to undo to be able to actually open up our main drawer. So we can start with the first one. You'll see here, Elijah the Gator is worth $500. So we can go ahead and open the $500 drawer or the 500 drawer anyways, and find the Gator symbol. So it's the bottom right, we can pull that out and you can see that it's unlocked our left set of latches. We'll do the same thing for Jimmy the Bear. He's worth 2,500. So we need to pull out the 2,000 drawer and the 500 drawer and then find the gator, um, sorry, find the bear sign on here, which is just our middle drawer on the right side. So you can see now that we've unlocked our right set of latches. And now for the last one here, Scorpion is worth 3,500. So it's gonna be all of the drawers on our left to add up to the 3500 and then we just need to find our scorpion here so he's the top right drawer and as soon as that pops you'll see we get another badge from this center drawer so we can go ahead and turn around and put this on our board and now that puzzle is solved so the next puzzle here is going to be on this map actually and basically what we need to do is if we um, pull this um, we can use this clue here and there's another clue in the bear drawer in the second drawer so we have two clues that are going to help us with this map so we'll let's just quickly pin um, some directions here so we're going to use the map and we're going to use the two notes from this desk as well as i guess we don't really need to use the wanted posters for this one but it is going to be the two clues and the map though so we basically, with this one, we have to figure out where these um, criminals or where these most wanted people were most likely to find them. So to start with James the Scorpion West, the first instruction is that he can't stand the cold and he used to hide out in caves. And you can see here that there's a bunch of different symbols all over the map. So we have a kind of a town looking thing. We have almost trees for a forest. We have a cave, we have trains. So there's a couple of different um, Symbols here to mark where our perpetrators like to hide out. Um, the second instruction on his um, little write up here is that he's on the run now and that he's been chased out of Abernir into a neighboring state and they don't think he could have made it very far past the border. So this is where he started. He's been since chased out of here, but they don't think that he's made it very far along the border. So we know first and foremost that we're looking for a cave along the border based on where he likes to hang out. We have a cave here in Atoxico. We also have a cave here very close to the border in Ferrado. One of the important parts about James the Scorpion West is it says he can't stand the cold. And in our second clue, it shows that um, Ferrado or Ferrado, 
has the coldest temperature. So we can basically rule this cave out and where we're gonna put our first pin for James the Scorpion West is just the cave in a Toxico. So we can pull this pin out of the map already here and just mark his location there. And now we're gonna do the same thing for Elijah the Gator. So he likes to hide in plain sight blending in with people in towns. So we know we're looking for a town symbol like this one here. They've deduced that he likes it in hot and humid conditions and prefers to hide near the borders where the three states touch. So we know we're looking for a town very close to where three states are that doesn't really narrow much down for us. We can basically, actually I don't know if it really narrows down anything because there is um, a, a town here where it's close to three borders. Um, a town here where it's close to three. So it's gonna be one of these corner towns is essentially what it's saying. But then the other important part is that he likes hot and humid. And if you look at um, Laura Lee, it's the, hot, the most humid and the second hottest. So we have a town here that fits with the temperature and the humidity. And it's also very close to a border where three states are. So we can go ahead for this one, we need to pull a pin out of the wanted board here to use, but we can go ahead and mark the gator's um, location just right here. And then for our last one, Jimmy the Bear McCarty. He operates a sea smuggling operation. He would pick the most isolated state with, so that there's fewer eyes on him and his operations. He's thinking that he's close to a train station. So again, if we pull up our secondary clue here, we see looking at the population up top here, Ferrar Ferrardo is the lowest population. So we know we're looking for somewhere in Ferrardo. It says something about a train station and it just so happens that there's quite a few in Ferrardo, but it doesn't say anything about borders. The important part in the bears write up is that he's currently operating a sea smuggling operation. Therefore, we can kind of figure that he's going to want a train station that's close to the sea. And obviously, again, with Ferrardo being the lowest population, we know that this is kind of where he is. We need one more pin. Going back to this cell that we were in before, the last pin is actually just in this soap block here. So if you break it apart, you can steal the pin out of there and just walk it back to mark his location up in Ferrardo. So just this train station along the sea here. You can see as soon as that pops, we get another deputy badge that we can turn around and plug into this board. So now with this, um, there's a couple other things that we have to kind of go through, and I'm just going to empty these clues here. We have a couple of deputy pictures here. If you look around the map, there's um, we have we picked this sheriff badge up earlier as well as the deputy badges. You have to kind of make note of the dates and the badges in each one of these. And for some of them, you can spin around. You want to hit the gold little pins on the back to actually be able to move this slider and take the picture with you, just for easier reference. There's another picture on top of the desk here. Do the same thing, flip it around and open the tabs and slide this one. And you can see this one has a bit of a clue in itself. So grab that picture and we can toss this. There's gonna be one more um, picture and that's just back in that second cell also, just tucked behind the shelving here. Now that we have the three pictures that we need to solve this puzzle, we can first of all look at the 1870 picture and flip it around. With the instructions on the back here that the sheriff comes above the deputy, we know that in all of these pictures the sheriff badges are gold. What it's going to do for us is we know all of the gold badges are going to be on top of the silver badges, which is basically what that clue is telling us. Now what we need to do is look at the order of the pictures here just by the, by the dates. We see one's from 1854, we have another one from 1870, and our last one is from 1898. And we want to put them in order from earliest to um, most recent. And what we're going to do now is just line those badges up. So obviously our first kind of section here is going to be um, a florally sheriff badge and kind of like a simple deputy badge. So we're going to use this slider puzzle to be able to line all of this up here. So. You can see now that here's our Florally Sheriff badge and we want to line this deputy badge up underneath of it. So we can go ahead and start moving these things around to be able to get what we need here. 
pull this around. So this is our first set. With this, we have the 1854 picture complete. Again, our sheriff badge, our floral sheriff badge is above our simple deputy badge. We wanna create the second one here now. It's a bit of a squarer sheriff badge with um, kind of like a bolder deputy badge, but it's still a star. So here's our squarer, dep our, our squarer sheriff's badge. So we can go ahead and pull that here. We know we gotta get this deputy badge down um, a little bit. So I gotta do a little bit of finagling here to be able to make sure that this all works. And we gotta start moving this stuff around here. So we wanna line this up underneath. Okay, so now we have our second set of badges here. As you can see by the picture, 1870's done. We have our square sheriff badge and our simpler, bolder deputy badge. And now our last one, obviously with whatever's left, we have our circular sheriff badge and a square deputy badge. And you can confirm that just by looking at the 1898 picture. So circle sheriff badge and our square deputy badge, and we can just pull them into shape here. And you can see with this, we unlock a tobacco box. I'm just gonna pitch these pictures quickly. And I'm going to start the last puzzle here with this vice's note under the door. So with this, it says um, to stay away from the vices. We have a vice lock here just on the fireplace right here. Using this note, it says we need to stay away from alcohol, tobacco, and gambling. And this is essentially the order that we're going to be putting numbers into the lock. So as I mentioned earlier, when we completed this horse chest, there's a bottle of liquor in here. And you can see we're going to be stealing the number of the number two from here. So because we know we put in alcohol, for our first number. We can go ahead and plug the two in from the, from the booze label there. We know now that our second number is gonna be from tobacco. And with this sheriff, um, the badge puzzle unlocking the tobacco box, if you click and open it, there's nothing actually inside. The number that we want is actually from the year of the tobacco tin, so 63. So we know, again, because of that note, we know the tobacco number comes second and third, really, because it was two numbers that they gave us. And now our last one is gonna be from gambling. And if you noticed over here, there's a playing card on the desk when we were solving those other puzzles. We're just gonna steal the number eight from here and plug that into the last position in this lock. So two, six, three, eight. And that's going to open this up for us. And again, going back to the block that we unlocked in the cell or from the lockbox, it's kind of, you can tell it's wooden and has some burn marks on it. Just throw it into the fire and it burns down into the skeleton key that we need to escape this room here. With that, we've escaped the jail and we've started our way through the Wild West Escape Simulator DLC. Hopefully you've liked what you've seen here. Consider subscribing to Friendly Frenzy Games for more escape simulator guides, tips, and tricks.